having no arms and no legs seems like it would be the worst body plan in the world. But um, it turns out these snakes um, use it to their, to their great advantage, and they can actually do, go into a lot of places that things with arms and legs can't. But it's pretty amazing how versatile this sort of long, string-like body is. Professor David Hu studies how snakes and other animals move, but he's not a biologist, he's a mathematician and mechanical engineer. So there's a lot of interest in animal locomotion these days. What can we learn from how animals walk, swim, fly? It turns out there's their interactions with their surroundings, for example, the fluids and the solids around them. It's very complicated and it's complex enough that um, mathematics plays a large role in trying to understand how they move. Hughes National Science Foundation study uses math to determine how snakes slither. And it turns out they move in a much different way than scientists have long thought. People generally think that Snakes keep their entire bodies flat against the ground when they move. In fact, they lift uh, parts of their bodies in order to increase their speed and efficiency. Who demonstrated a few experiments for us? This, uh, Using highly concentrated gelatin and polarizing light, it's possible to see where the snake is pushing down and what parts of its body are lifted up. So by concentrating its weight here, the snake can optimize where it's wanting to intersect it with the ground. Graduate student Jasmine Narodi learned to like being around snakes, but she said the smaller ones she worked with just don't take directions very well. They can get out of anything. I mean, we found snakes in, in printers and in, in like air vents and under tables and under desks, and they've just popped up out of drawers when you've opened them. And if you have 10 snakes in a cage, you sometimes don't realize that there's nine, and then a day later you'll find it in the drawer. Some experiments require putting the snakes to sleep for a few minutes. Snakes actually don't breathe very much, that's why this actually takes a long time. They can hold their breath for a couple minutes at a time. Um, they have incredibly slow metabolisms because they're cold-blooded. They're almost asleep, I think. I think I have a higher dose this time. If you take this cell phone, and um, it'll slide equally in all directions. And it's because the bottom is flat. These snakes, you see how they have these scales? Um, they're basically like overlapping shingles on your house, so that if you rub if you rub the snake towards the tail, it feels very smooth because that's the direction the snake actually moves in. Uh, but if you take it by its tail and pull it against the ground, the scales will catch. So when you put these snakes on a plane, an inclined plane, the snake that's head first moves fastest, tail first comes in second, and sideways is last because of the friction of their scales. For decades, researchers thought snakes moved through a forest by pushing off rocks, twigs, branches. But that did not explain their relative ease navigating smooth surfaces. The snakes has these belly scales that are overlapping, and they basically push into very small bumps in the ground. That small amount of force can provide enough force for the snake to move. If the scales are covered with a jacket, there's no traction, and the animal goes nowhere fast. But look how it struggles compared to an unclothed snake. This milk snake showed who just what it thought of the exercise, but these snake moves are valuable in merging math, biology, and engineering. Anyone can put a few snakes to sleep and rub their hands against their bellies and see that they're smooth in one direction and rough in another, but it's only using the math that tells you that the, the, these measurements, these friction measurements, are sufficient to get these snakes to move. Who can calculate when a snake uses each of four movements, or gates, to get around? For the snake, that would be if it's slithering and not really going very fast, it'll say, okay, I'm going to go to gear two. And gear two for them, instead of undulating, will be extending and contracting. They do this automatically. As soon as they're born out of the egg, they can do all their gates. So this is what they do when they're going through very thin, small tunnels. The other two gates are side winding and a straight line motion. An understanding of snake movements is helping engineers design better snake-like robots. So if you have a limbless robot for a search and rescue team or for something like that, they can get into much smaller spaces. Probably because they're just so different from humans, snakes often get a bad rap. But someday soon, a snake, or at least a snake robot, may work its way into a lot of people's hearts, literally. If instead of opening up this chest cavity, you can just drill two holes and have these uh, surgical snake robots slither into your chest and perform all the operations, the healing time is much faster. Sometimes modern technology can learn a thing or two from a simple, elegant design from Mother Nature. For Science Nation, I'm Bruce Burkhardt.